Thanks, Joanna. The Chicago Blackhawks are in turmoil and not because of the team's current winless record. On Tuesday, General Manager Stan Bowman resigned. This after an investigation revealed former video coach Brad Aldrich allegedly sexually abused a former player and that team executives were informed and failed to take immediate action. Last evening, the survivor at the center of this case revealed himself to be former first-round draft pick Kyle Beach. He told Canadian Sports Network TSN he believes the players, coaches and staff all knew, even though many said they didn't. Word spread pretty quick. Um, I do believe that everybody in that locker room knew about it because the comments were made in the locker room. They were made on the ice. They were made around the arena with all different people of all different backgrounds, players, staff, media in in the presence. And joining us now with more are Sean Black, Chief Projects Officer with the Illinois Coalition Against Sexual Assault, and Ben Pope, Chicago Blackhawks beat reporter at the Chicago Sun-Times, who has been covering this story. Welcome to both of you. And Ben Pope, I want to start with the latest. Uh, team captains Jonathan Taves, Patrick Kane made some comments uh, last night about this that have been a bit controversial. Fill us in on the latest. Well, General Manager Stan Bowman, how is the uh one of those uh, team executives who was allegedly involved in the cover-up uh, had to resign when this came out. Um, but both Kane and Taves, um, who, who have certainly come up and been stars in the organization for a long time under Bowman, defended him, uh, saying that they thought that he was a good person, that, that this action described in this doesn't match the stand that they knew. Um, and in Taves' case, went even further, saying that he doesn't know how, uh, quote, deleting him uh, can really solve the problem here. Um, so very sort of strange defense of him, considering all that we've learned about Bowman's role in covering up the sexual assault 11 years ago. Um, and that's certainly been making waves. Taves being the captain for a long time now um, and Kane being someone who said he knew Beach pretty well. Um, certainly surprising to see that from them. Right. Uh, of course, those two players were around back in 2010. And uh, Sean Black is someone who tracks these cases. Your reaction to that investigation that came out this week from Jenner and Block? Well, it's very disturbing. It's tragic. I feel incredibly sorry for the Kyle Beach in this case. Um, it, unfortunately, it has all the hallmarks of a lot of sexual assault cases. Um, people trying to cover it up, not believing the victim right away and causing trauma for the victim or re-traumatization for the victim. Um, it's also not unusual at all for a victim to wait, you know, to come forward for several years um, in the public eye. You know, so it's, it has all the hallmarks of a very usual sexual assault case. Right, and we should mention there are multiple lawsuits that are open here, and this was an investigation that was launched by the team as a result. Um, Ben Pope, you heard Beach say he thought everybody knew. Taves and Kane say well, they didn't learn until after Aldrich was gone. Where's the truth here? Well, that's the difficult thing to figure out. Um, two players from that 2010 team, Brent Sopel and Nick Boynton, uh, both of which are no longer in the NHL, have said um, in interviews earlier this summer that uh, they knew and that they believe everyone on the team knew. Um, meanwhile, Kane and Taves and, Brent and Duncan Keith, uh, who's still in the league in Edmonton, uh, say they did not know. Taves said that he learned at training camp the following year. Uh, Kane said that he didn't know until this started coming out this summer. Uh, it's hard to track down exactly who's right, who's wrong. Um, we may never know. Uh, the investigation focused mainly on the behavior and um, knowledge of the team executives who are involved more in the handling of it uh, and didn't go deeply into the players. Uh, I believe they interviewed 14 players and um, all but those two, Soap and Boynton, said they didn't know about it. Um, but Who's to say whether they're lying or trying to protect themselves or whether they're telling the truth? And um, that's, that's certainly a disappointing mystery that we still don't know the answer to yet. Right, and certainly Beach uh, uh, is very adamant uh, on, on what he experienced back then. Sean Black, when you think of sexual assault, you don't always think about man on man, especially um, if, the, if the victim here is you know, an athlete or physical. How common are cases like this? And, and we should also mention involving a coach, you know, a mentor. Well, most sexual assault cases, the vast majority of the perpetrators are someone known to the victim. So it's not unusual that it's someone the victim would know. Um, it's not a, unusual that it's someone who holds some sort of power over the victim, um, whether it be a family member, coach, or you know, a teacher, any, any one of that stature. So 
you know, is, is the most common, when you think about sexual assault, you often, you know, you think about man against perpetrating a rape against a woman, or you think about um, man abusing a child. But this just goes to show you that anyone can be a victim of sexual assault. Anyone can be a victim, a professional athlete. In those moments, you can be that victim and, you know, it's traumatizing and someone might freeze. And sexual assault is always the fault of the rapist or the perpetrator in this case, and it can happen to anyone. And it's the, really the key is to believe that person when they come forward and help them recover from the trauma of sexual violence. And, and this investigation doesn't necessarily say the executives that were apprised of this didn't believe it. They just didn't do anything until after the Stanley Cup. Uh, let's uh, read a statement the Blackhawks sent out after Beach came forward last night. Quote, it was inexcusable for the then executives of the Blackhawks organization to delay taking action regarding the reported sexual misconduct. No playoff game or championship is more important than protecting our players and staff from predatory behavior. Ben Pope, we mentioned Bowman gone. Uh, the former team president, John McDonough, is long gone, and he's really been um, mentioned here as someone that also should have taken action. Is, is this the last of the fallout here for the Blackhawks? Well, from the Blackhawks' standpoint, um, all of the executives are gone at this point. They also dismissed Al McIsaac, uh, who is also part of that meeting. Um, around the league, Joel Quinville was the Hawks coach at that time, is now the Panthers' active coach. Uh, he met with NHL Commissioner Gary Bettman today, and we still don't know yet exactly what his future is. Uh, Winnipeg Jets GM Kevin Dayoff was an assistant GM with the Hawks at that time, and we don't know what his future yet involves either. Uh, but the Hawks, even though they have gotten rid of all the executives involved, still have a lot of work to do to regain the trust of the community. Uh, their last two home games have not sold out. Uh, it's the first time in 13 years that that's been the case, and there's been a ton of frustration online, in person, everywhere within the fan base and among Chicago sports fans in general, uh, just how much uh, the organization betrayed them and how one of their greatest triumphs is now uh, tainted um, by this incident. So uh, the Hawks still have a lot of work to do to rebuild, even though they have at least gotten rid of those who are most responsible. Yeah, you talk about that 2010 Stanley Cup victory that was so celebrated by fans. And let's actually hear what uh, Beach had to say about the fact that Aldrich was allowed to celebrate that and take the Stanley Cup home. And then when they won, to see him paraded around, lifting the cup at the parade, at the team pictures, at the celebrations. It made me feel like nothing. It made me feel like I didn't exist. It made me feel that I wasn't important. And it made me feel like that he was in the right and I was wrong. Sean Black, Kyle Beach re-traumatized here, and he talked about how this kind of ruined his life, all, all the spiral that he went down. Take us inside the mental anguish of survivors that live with being sexually assaulted. Well, it's an incredibly traumatic experience. Um, the trust that you had in a person is completely broken. You know, not only often in Kyle Beach's case, not only by his rapist, but then the trust he put in the, the management of the Blackhawks, the, his teammates on the Blackhawks, all that was busted. And, you know, recovering from that is a, a long process. Everyone does it differently, um, but all you can do is try to provide help and services to someone who comes to you with this information. It is incredibly traumatic to them and the recovery, there's no right or wrong recovery time and you just have to work with them on that. And Beach says he really can't begin his recovery until uh, he came out and this went public and now he is uh, on that road. All right, uh, our thanks to Sean Black and Ben Pope. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for having me.